of the Obama administration, they knew about Russia's possible election interference. They did nothing. And over the weekend, President Trump, he weighed in on the issue. He tweeted out, quote, the reason that President Obama did nothing about Russia after being notified by the CIA of meddling is that he expected Hillary Clinton would win. And he didn't want to rock the boat. He didn't choke. He colluded or obstructed. And it did the Democrats and crooked Hillary no good. Joining us now with Reaction, the author of the brand new book. It's part of a series, unbelievable background information about our framers and founders and the great philosophers that inspired them, Rediscovering Americanism and the Tyranny of Progressivism, the great one, Mark Levin. Before we get into specifics, Mark, I, I want to stay on this issue for just a second. 11 right. months, Russia, 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 Russia. Turns out there's no evidence of any collusion. Obama was notified in August of 2016. He didn't want to rock the boat because he thought Hillary had it in the bag. Now, with this knowledge, what should we take from that? Well, first of all, I think now we do have proof of collusion within the uh, Obama administration. The various departments and agencies involved in intelligence and law enforcement colluded to cover this up and keep it from the American people and obstruct our knowledge during the course of the election. Uh, if they really thought that Donald Trump colluded, don't you think they would have put out this information way back in August? Uh, the president is exactly correct. They figured Hillary would win. They sat on this information. Then they put it out near the, uh, near the uh, end of the election in order to try and help her. And Hillary Clinton goes on and on with collusion. The Democrats pick it up. And now, for some god reason, we have a special counsel. I think that special counsel, Mr. Mueller, ought to consider expanding his investigation to include the prior administration, to include their activities with the Russians, to include their activities to cover up for Vladimir Putin. And while he's at it, he may want to include uh, domestic surveillance, which I believe took place, and the unmasking of American citizens, perhaps some of the Trump transition team members. So by my count, you know, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it, Mark, you're right. I mean, what happened to General Flynn was a crime, a violation of the Espionage Act. I've talked a lot and at length about unmasking, surveillance, and, and leaking of, of raw intel. Then we have Hillary. You know, it's incontrovertible, the evidence she committed crimes here. And if you want a real Russia collusion story, it's the Uranium One deal, where she gave 20% of America's uranium to Putin. And but, she Sean, got I, think we have a, the I think we have a, a new Russian. I think we have a new Russian collusion story, which is the collusion within the Obama administration to cover up for Vladimir Putin, whatever the reason. That's what they did. They kept that information from the American people in the course of a presidential election because they thought it would help Hillary. They certainly weren't trying to help Donald Trump. Now, it seems to me we honestly need to get to, to the bottom of the real collusion. Now we have collusion. The Democrats should be excited. Collusion's been found. It's among them. And I think we need to get to the bottom. We have obstruction, potentially, real potential obstruction with the former Attorney General of the United States, Loretta Lynch. So by my count, Loretta Lynch, right? By my count, we have uh, potential collusion, right? By my count, the Democrats have a problem on their hands. Hillary Clinton was criminally investigated, too. So yeah. my attitude about this is, you want a special counsel? Now, Mr. Special Counsel, when you're done hiring every liberal Democrat in Washington, D.C., you might want to reconsider what you're doing and take a look at the prior administration. You know, we have a shared belief. Um, I call it, uh, there, there's a silent coup going on in this country, and, and these forces aligning against the president. You have your own way of saying it, Mark, and, and we've got these real problems. We also both agree that America's at a tipping point. We better get it right now. And what they're doing to destroy this man is unprecedented in history. And this goes to the heart of your book is that one of the things I love about your books is, number one, your, your passion for the Constitution, our country, for our framers, founders, but not only that, those that inspired them come shining through. They all warned about deep state. They all warned about the size and scope of government. Explain how that fits into the narrative you're advancing in this book. Well, look, the problem is when you look at the media and Hollywood and education and our public schools and colleges and universities, when you listen to Democrats speak and a lot of Republicans speak, uh, you reach the conclusion, if you understand history and you dig into it, that the progressives have won, that we're in a post-constitutional period. We don't even talk about the principles that made this country great. So what I try to do in my own little way is take them on, 
take on the, the, uh, the progressive masterminds, take on the, the attitude in our government, take on the attitude in our media for people who are interested. You know, the fact is that if you ignore the academics and intellectuals, you know, people, their eyes roll over and they say, ah, forget about it. You ignore them, you lose your country. Because they're the ones that drive the politics. They're the ones that determine whether you're free or not in every society. So I take them on. There's a difference between being an elite. We like elite sports players, elite chefs, an elitist who is a put-down person or tries to control you or something of the sort. And Sean, from my book, I put down a short list of the difference between those of us, Americanism, and the others, progressivism. These are the two forces, one liberty, one tyrannical. We believe in the yeah, Constitution, right. they, they believe in centralism. We believe in individualism, they believe in conformity. We believe in private property, they believe in collectivism. We believe in prosperity, they believe in redistribution. We believe in, in the separation of powers, they believe in this all-powerful administrative state. We believe in eternal truths, they believe in ideological social engineering. We believe in cultural stability, they believe in constant transformation. I'm getting there. We believe in real science. They believe in social science. We believe in the rights of man. They believe in the power of government. We believe in a moral order. They believe in situational ethics. We believe in liberty. They believe in a growing authoritarianism. And we believe in education. They believe in indoctrination. Finally, we believe in the civil society. They believe in the federal leviathan. There couldn't be any bigger difference between them and us. And they, uh, they rely on the, uh, the, on the philosophers, uh, Marx and Hegel and Rousseau and others, which I talk about, I won't hear talk about at length. We, I, we, don't, we rely on the great Aristotle and Cicero and Locke and of course, the founding fathers. This is a debate that we must have to get our principles back, to get our liberty back, to get our republic back, because it's been taken away from us. Well said. You know, Mark, I was listening to you in the last sec segment, and you're talking about the need for the intellectual foundation. Founders, framers, constitution, and even beyond that, those that inspired these guys. You know, I look at President Trump, and here's a guy that, you know, frankly, practical, common sense, instinctive knowledge that big government is oppressive and wrong, regulations are burdensome. It's hurting the American people. Millions more in poverty on food stamps and out of the labor force. Doubling our debt is dumb. You know, top-down health care is stupid. And he has all of that instinctively. And look at how those forces that support the opposite of what you're explaining in this book react to him trying to drain that swamp and get back to those founding principles, perhaps without the intellectual foundation that maybe you have, but frankly, you're one of a few people that really do. They're definitely out to destroy him, and I think they're out to destroy him for three fundamental reasons. Number one, he's not one of them. And they really thought they'd get Hillary Clinton in four more years of this crazy leftist-type government. That's number one. Number two, he's striking them where they they believe they have absolute monopoly control in the administrative state. The departments and agencies, we have this massive fourth branch of government that is nowhere in the Constitution. The deep state. That passes deep state, but it passes uh, three to 4,000 laws a year without our input. It continues to operate despite the public will. It rejects electoral outcomes. That is the progressive leftist power base, the administrative state. And number three, the courts. The unelected judges and justices in this country, and you saw what a disaster they were in these district court cases, and thank goodness we have a Supreme Court that took a look at his executive order on immigration, and it was a 95% victory there for Let the president, this, and Mark. congratulations to him. Yep. If you're talking to the president and you said, how do you defeat these forces that are selectively leaking, the corruption that is against him, what specific advice do you give him based on your research here? Well, first of all, he can't defeat them. He can start the process of defeating them. And this is one of the things that bothers me. President Reagan was in there eight years, started the process. And then the other Republican presidents come in and they unravel it. It's like with Obamacare right now. The Republicans are basically giving their imprimatur to a massive progressive government program. The way you do it is this. You shrink the size of government. If you're going to go into every department and agency, uh, it's, it's like hand-to-hand uh, -hand warfare in the jungle. That doesn't work. 
slash them across the board except for defense and federal law enforcement and intel. Slash them across the board, 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent. Call in McConnell, call in Ryan, and read them the riot act if you can. And if they won't do what the president says, then replace them. He's the leader of the Republican Party. Replace them. So far, I would replace them, but what do I know? So you need to do that. Number, there's I'll another issue, you. too. Well, yeah, there's, yeah, no, I don't think I'll so. I'm with you, Mark. I'm, I'm sick and tired of, they have no urgency, no fight, well, here's no, the problem, oh. Sean. I, I have Russian heritage, so I go to jail in two seconds, you know, so that, that, would, that would rule me out, even though I can't stand them. That's a whole other issue. Uh, but that said, you know, I've been behind another movement called the Article 5 Convention of States, and I wish the president and his administration would take a look at it, even though they don't have a direct role. And that would allow us, through our state legislatures, to, to change the nature of this government, which has been stolen from us. This is not anymore a representative republic, not with a massive administrative state, or a federal republic with federalism, since the states basically do what they're told. How many states are course, on board now? Yeah. We have 12, and we need 34, but we have 12 without any real effective national push. That's a big deal. And, uh, and the other thing is, um, we're not really a constitutional Republican. I don't know what we are. But the reason they're trying to chew up Trump is because Trump is not one of them. He doesn't belong to their club. He, and, and I'm going to tell you, say something else that's not even related to this. I want to thank the president for something. He gets attacked for this. Thank you for taking on the media. It's a damn about time somebody did. Don't stop tweeting. Be more careful with your tweets, but don't stop tweeting because you're able to go over the head of the media Absolutely. the way Reagan did with his speeches. You can be more careful. I don't care. Is the, are the media careful about what they report? No. No. So any, in any event, Great I'm one. one of those. Count me in the minority that says, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Mark, always good to see you, my friend. That's why we call you the great one. Thank you.